as researchers, it's really important that we know how to talk to other people about the work that we do. And so that's why Baylor created these great pins that say, ask me about my research. And that's also why I'm here today with my friends, Emma and Maddie, <laughs> to talk about the work that I do and how fun it can be to talk about research. What is autism? Autism is a condition that affects people's brains and how they learn and how they develop. So although no two individuals with autism are alike, we know that they often have difficulties interacting with other people and communicating with others. So for example, sometimes it might be harder for people with autism to know what they need to say or do around other people. Also, they might have a really, really intense interest in certain favorite things, or they like to do the same things over and over again. And sometimes that might get in the way of their being around other people or their being able to learn. How do you study autism? There are lots of different ways that you can study autism. So some people like to look at pictures or kind of like x-rays of brains to see how they might be different in people with autism and people without autism. Other people like to look at genetic information in ourselves. And then I actually do work that involves uh, directly talking and, um, to parents and to children and playing with children sometimes to find out, do you really have autism or is it something else? So what's really cool though is that I'm friends with the other researchers who look at brains and look at the genetic information. And when we get together, when we put all of our information together, we can actually answer more questions about autism and ans answer them in better ways than if we were doing it alone. Can you tell us about <laughs> Spark? I am so glad that you brought up Spark and I'm so excited that you guys are participating. So Spark is actually the largest US study of autism in history. So the goal of Spark is really twofold. One is to help identify new genetic causes for autism. And another one is to really help speed up the pace of autism research so that we can answer more questions and answer them faster. And so when we gather information from a lot of people and we share that information with other researchers, it saves them time and money so that they don't have to go out finding these people and asking them all the same questions over again. Why do we have to spit into a tube? So I mentioned earlier that there are some researchers who look at genetic information in our cells and we can get some of those cells from your spit. And so you spit in a tube so that other researchers can look at the genetic information in your cells. Thank you for answering our question. You are very welcome.